What's going on today, guys? Before I get into the video, I'd first like to say that this is the second part of a two-part video series talking about beginner landscape photography mistakes and how you can avoid them so that you can become a better landscape photographer a lot faster than what I did. Go ahead and check out the first part of this video series if you haven't already. Let's get back into the video so that I can discuss more beginner landscape photography mistakes. As a beginner, you're surfing the web, you're surfing YouTube, you're taking in all this content and all this information about landscape photography and outdoor photography. Unfortunately, because there is so much information out there and not much regulation, there's a lot of false idols out there and a lot of fake gurus. Do not make the mistake of following fake gurus or false idols. These fake gurus, in my opinion, typically have images that look exactly the same as every other person's on 500px. So if you want to check to see if someone's actually a good landscape photographer, go ahead and look at their portfolio and see their images firsthand and you can make the call whether this is just another guy shooting the same location in Iceland under different weather conditions. You should find legitimate landscape photographers that have some sort of originality to their work or some sort of uniqueness. People who truly understand photography as an art form rather than just a location list that they check off. So that's the next mistake to avoid as a beginner. Don't follow false idols and don't follow fake gurus. Follow your own intuition and your own passions. This will bring you the most value out of landscape photography. Trust me, it's not about getting images that attract a big audience. It's about the hours you spend in the field taking those photos, the actual life you spend doing landscape photography. Ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. Holy frig. Just looking at it almost gives me a heart attack. This next beginner mistake that I see landscape photographers and outdoor photographers make is one that will really, really impede your progress as a landscape photographer. And that's making the mistake of blaming bad weather for not going out and shooting. Don't use bad weather as an excuse to not go out and shoot because honestly, bad weather almost always turns into great images. Some of the best images I've ever seen have typically been shot under some sort of bad weather condition. Bad weather could be something like stormy weather. I've never seen a landscape photography image with stormy weather that looked bad. In fact, the, the stormy clouds typically make an image look unique because these are typical times that people don't see. So the image already has a unique characteristic to it. Perhaps it's an overcast day and you're telling yourself that, oh, because there's no direct sunlight or there's not going to be a colorful sunrise or sunset, I'm not going to go out and shoot. That's another mistake that you want to avoid. You should always go out under any conditions. Maybe it's freezing cold. It's towards the end of the year and you're, you're warm in bed. You don't want to get up. You're telling yourself, oh, it's not going to be worth it. I'm not going to get good images. Eh, you're wrong again. You should be going out even when it's freezing cold out. So that's the next mistake that I see beginners make. Using bad weather as an excuse not to go out and shoot when really you should be going out when it's bad weather because bad weather actually makes great images. Leave a comment below about what your favorite conditions are to shoot under. I'm curious. Do you like overcast days? Do you like shooting in freezing conditions? What are your favorite conditions to shoot under?
All right, this next beginner mistake that I'm almost certain you're gonna make at some point is falling trap to gear lust. You wanna avoid gear lust to the best of your abilities as a beginner, intermediate, and advanced photographer. So what is gear lust? Gear lust is when you start a new hobby, like photography, let's say, and you quickly start to convince yourself that buying new, fancy, expensive gear is gonna help you in your photography or your hobby. And I can tell you that within landscape photography, newer fancy gear really isn't that important. And it's almost never worth the money you spend. Typically, beginner landscape photographers convince themselves buying new gear is actually an investment for them because they'll probably make the money back with that expensive gear through selling prints or some sort of revenue stream, which in fact, that, that rarely happens. So as a beginner, you should really try try to avoid gear loss. If you are gonna spend money, and I'd suggest spending less of it on gear and more of it on travel. Spend the money going to a location that you wanna visit and take landscape photos at, and that will have a lot more value than just buying new expensive gear. If you are gonna spend money on a body or a lens, then I would tell you that a lens is much more valuable than the camera body itself. So if you do need a new lens and you're kinda up in the air, oh, I wanna buy a new body, Body or a new lens, I definitely would say that a lens is going to go a lot farther than the camera body. And while we're on the topic of spending money, if you are going to buy gear, you should always buy it used. There are so many people that try photography, they spend thousands of dollars on brand new gear and then it sits in the closet for two and three years. That's the perfect time for you to swoop in and get that undervalued gear at a discount price. So if you're going to spend money, buy it on used gear. Actually, I'm kind of curious, comment below on something that you're thinking about buying, whether it's worth it or whether it's not worth it. I'll get back to you guys' comment and let you know my thoughts on whether it'll actually be valuable or whether it won't be. That is my final tip for beginner landscape photographers. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you follow these tips that I give you, it will help you avoid these beginner mistakes that everyone falls trapped to. Like the video if it was valuable to you or informative, educational in any sort of way. If you want more valuable content on landscape photography, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel and also follow me on Instagram or Facebook at the New Brunswick Landscape Photographer. Thank you guys so much for your time. Again, I really hope you enjoyed the video. That's everything I got for you for today. So uh, see you later and I'll see you in the next video.